Hey everyone, today's video is from one of my courses called the Flask Extensions course. So the topic is field lists in Flask WT forms and you'll see that in just a moment when the video starts. And I just wanna let you know that if you're interested in learning about some specific Flask extensions like Flask WTF, uh, Flask Mail, and so on, I have a few in here, you can check out the course. You can go to my website, prettyprinted.com and I'll also put a link in the description below to the course directly. So I hope you enjoy this video and if you have any questions at the end, Feel free to ask them here. Thanks for watching. A field list is going to be a list of fields that we can display. So this is useful when we want to have the user input the exact same data multiple times. So in our example, we're gonna do something with the year and the total, but if a user is putting in data for, let's say an e-commerce form where they're putting in, you know, the different types of a particular product, then you know you could have many types. You can have like three different types, you can have five different types, you can have 10 different types. So you're just putting in the exact same type of data multiple times. Obviously the data itself would change, but it's the same type of data multiple times. So to demonstrate this, what I'll do is I'll create another form. So I'll call this uh, year form. And we're going to inherit from form again. So we can't use flask form because this is going to be used inside of a flask form. And we're gonna have two fields. We're gonna have an integer field for the year, and then we're going to have a total field for the total. So total, just like that. And then to put it in our form, to put it in our name form, we can say something like years, and this is going to be a field list. So we need to import field lists from a WT forms. So I'll add it here. So field lists, capital F, capital L. And here, we're gonna have field lists, and it's going to be a list of form fields. And these form fields are gonna come from the year form. So it's a combination of the form field and the actual form that we're interested in, and we're creating a list of them. So what we can do is we can put minimum and maximum values on here. So just to show you the documentation really quick, we go to field enclosures, here we can see in the field list, we have min entries and max entries. So by default it's zero, but let's make it three. So min entries is the name of the field. So uh, min entries, and let's put three. So we should see three of these. And to render this, what we need to do is we need to loop over the fields before we can render them because this is a list. So we'll go to the index and underneath the phone number, what I'll do is I'll create a loop so I'll say four fields in form dot years. So we're going to get multiple fields back. So for each field, what we want to do is we want to render that field. So now let's see what this looks like. If I go to the form, refresh the page, have a syntax error. Once again, it's saving before I do the imports so i'll just hit flask run again and refresh this so now at the bottom we see year zero years one and years two the label can be changed to something else i'm not too worried about that instead what i'm concerned with is the number of fields that appears in this list so i have three and that's because i have the minimum entries as three if i change the min entries to let's say five not 53 but five i should see Five, so I have zero, one, two, three, and four. So if I fill out this form and display the data, I just have to loop over each value in years. So I'll do that down here. So I'll ignore the country code stuff for now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a variable called output, and we're just gonna build onto it. So we'll have this start as an H1 tag. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loop over each year, so for year in form dot years, I'm going to append to this output. So output uh, plus equals, let's say year, and then this should be an F string. So it's gonna be year and actually I should make this like a field. So for field and form years, because this will make more sense. Instead of typing year.year, .year, it would be field.year.data. And I'll have space after that. 
And then I also add on the total. So this would be field.total.data. And let's go ahead and put like a line break after this. So BR. And then finally, after the loop, I'll put the closing H1 tag. And I'll return this output. Okay, so let's try running the form again. Okay, so I need a password. Uh, I need these because they are integers, so I'll just put them in there. And now I can worry about the years that I have. So for year one, I'll have the year 2010, and the total, let's say 1,000. Then 2011, 2,000. 2012, uh, we'll have 3,000. 2013, 4,000, and 2014 will have 5,000. So let's hit login and we see all those values appear. So each year and then the total for the year because I inserted multiple values for the years. And if I wanted to have some pre populated values, I can do that. I can go here and you know, this can come from your data, but basically you just have to have a list of things that have key values for the year in the total. So for this example, I'll use a name tuple. So let's say from, from collections import named tuple. And then inside of my index, uh, when I create the form, so before uh, I'll create a group of these, so I'll use the name tuple, and I'll call it group. And it's gonna have a year and a total. So this group object will have year and total attributes. So I can create a group for each one. So group, uh, for the first one, the year is gonna be, let's say 2015, and the total is 10,000. And then group two, uh, the group is gonna be for year 2016 and the total is 15,000. And I'll add one more, group three, group 2017, and then 25,000. And then I can pass this to the form. Uh, there's another way we can add this to the form. So I showed you how to use like the name of the field directly. You can also use the object, which we have here. In addition to that, you can use just data, which will be you know a dictionary and the keys for the data will be use. So I'll show you that here. Uh, we'll say years or how about this data equals and then years is the key. And then I uh, will add G1, G2, and G3. And then we can add the data here. So this can be on the user object. It can be, you know, years equals this is a dictionary. But just to show you another way of doing it, you can have the data uh, keyword here and pass in data. So now when I go to view the form again, we see that it has pre-populated uh, 2015, 2016, and 2017. And when I go to submit the form, so let me just add in some values here and hit submit. And it tells me that I'm missing these fields, so they're required. So let me do that here because they're integer fields. So you know, empty strings don't qualify as integer fields. So I'll just add one for 2018, let's say, uh, 12,300 and 2019, let's say 100,000. Uh, add in the secret again, hit login. And now we see all the values from those uh, fields that were submitted. So using a field list is very similar to using a form field. This is when you want to repeat things multiple times in your form. And if you want to use the max entries, you can. It just limits how many fields will display, regardless of how much you pass into the form initially.